Good afternoon to viewers and listeners to ZIZ Radio and Television, also on our social media platforms at this time. We are here at Government House for the installation ceremony of Her Excellency Marcella Liber Jeppe. And the program for the ceremony, uh, if I can just run down the program for you, the arrival of the Honorable Prime Minister. We have already seen a number of government ministers, also some government dignitaries here at the Government House already. We have just seen the arrival to Government House of Her Excellency Miss Marcella Liebert, JP. As part of the program this afternoon, there will be the invocation by the Reverend Sylvester Herbert senior pastor of the Wesleyan Holiness Bastier and the Connery, the welcome remarks and the administration of the oaths by Her Ladyship Tamara Gill, the resident High Court judge. There will also be an address by the Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Terence Drew, and then the highlight of this afternoon's program We'll see the inaugural address by the Governor General, Her Excellency Marcella Liebert, JP. A number of persons have already gathered here at Government House, and of course, among them will be a number of dignitaries as well, not only from St. Kitts and Nevis, but further afield. And just to give you a list of the persons who should be visiting here for the installation of the new Governor General, Her Excellency Marcella Liebert, Sir Rodney Williams, GCMG, KGN, KSTJ, MBBS, PhD, the Governor General of Antigua and Barbuda is expected to be here, the Most Honorable Dame Sandra Mason, FB, GCMG, DA, KSTJ, LLD, the President of Barbados, the Honorable Philip Peer, the Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Deacon Mitchell, the Prime Minister of Grenada, Dr. Didicus Jules, the Director General of the OECS, and Mr. Tom Hines, the British High Commission of Barbados. Those are just some of the dignitaries that should be here at Government House for the installation ceremony. And just to give you a brief history of Government House, the house was built by the Blakes family around the time of emancipation. And shortly after the Blakes built the house, they sold it to a planter merchant vestryman named Thomas Harper. And that was way back in 1834. Mr. Harper named the property Springfield. Later, the house became known as a Springfield House, and that's the house in the background here. Springfield House became a rector's house. The Venerable Francis Bradwitt felt that Springfield House provided a style of accommodation that was suitable to the rector of Bastia, himself of course, and the Venerable Francis Bradwitt was the first Archdeacon of St. Kitts. And after Archdeacon Gibbs, this is now in 1883, we're going to skip from 1855, going right down to 1883, after Archdeacon Gibbs retired, Springfield House was declared as the official residence of the head of government. Charles Manuel Eldridge was the lieutenant governor of St. Kitts at the time in 1883, and Charles Manuel Eldridge was the first head of government to occupy Springfield House, which is now known as Government House, and Government House remains the official residence of the Governor General. In case you've just joined us, my name is Veer Galloway, and we are here at Government House bringing to you the installation ceremony of Her Excellency Marcella Liebert, JP. And just a bit about the new Governor General, Marcella Liebert, JP. Marcella Liebert is a former politician, former cabinet minister, 
and former Speaker of the National Parliament of St. Kitts and Nevis. In fact, she was the first female to hold that position post-independence. She has served in various ministerial positions, also as the acting Prime Minister. In her early life and education, she was born on July 10, 1953, right here in Basti, St. Kitts and Nevis, to Anne Eliza Martin and Clement Liburd. And after attending the Basti Girls School, Liburd graduated from the Basti High School. She earned her Bachelor of Arts from the University of the West Indies in the year 1976. She returned from abroad and began teaching at the Bastia and the Keon High Schools. She returned to her own studies, obtaining a Bachelor of Law with Honours in 1992 from the Norman Manley Law School, where she continued her education, earning a legal education certificate from NMLS in 1994. And that's just a brief history of the new Governor General, Her Excellency Marcella Liber JP, will be giving you more as we continue to bring you live coverage of the installation ceremony. And as you can see, a number of persons are already seated from as far back as after 4 o'clock this afternoon to see this historical ceremony, the installation of the first female Governor General of St. Kitts and Nevis and she is taking over the mantle from the former Governor General His Excellency Sir Cutbutt that should be His Excellency Sir S. W. Tapley Seaton and just to name the former Governor Generals His Excellency Sir Edmund Lawrence then you had Sir Probin Innes Sir Probin was followed by Sir Cuthbert Sebastian. And then we had His Excellency S.W. Tapley Seaton. And now Her Excellency Marcella Liburd Jeppy has been installed or should be installed officially this afternoon on Wednesday night. On Wednesday night. On Wednesday night, we had the official installation of Her Excellency right here at uh, Government House from around five minutes before 12. The ceremony lasted about 10 minutes. And And getting back to the career of the new newly installed governor general after she admission her admission as a barrister and solicitor for the eastern caribbean supreme court that was in 1994 she began a political career she was appointed as the secretary of the st kitts and nevis labor party in 1997 and in 2004 she became speaker of the national <laughs> parliament can't Her hear Excellency him. served until 2008 when she ran as a candidate for constituency number two. St. Kitts was elected as a member of parliament. And among her outstanding achievements as a minister, she drafted legislation which included the Domestic Violence Act I can't hear anything. and Equal Pay Act. She served as the Minister of Health, Social Services, Community Development, Culture and Gender Affairs, as well as at one point in time she served as the Acting Prime Minister. In 2011, she was featured in an exhibit promoted by various departments of the Government of St. Kitts and Nevis to highlight problems. And next to me I have Jason Davis. Good afternoon to you, Jason. And what are your thoughts about uh, the huge gathering we're seeing here this afternoon so well, far? You know, there has been one word that's been repeated multiple times in relation to this event, historic. It is definitely historic. This is the first female governor general that has been sworn in 
uh, for the Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis. And there's a very strong turnout here at the government house. Um, fr family members, friends, supporters of the SKNLP, government ministers, members of the diplomatic corps, all here for the installation ceremony of Her Excellency Marcella Liburd, JP. So yes, there is a, an air of excitement, anticipation, and of course, a very classical and elegant touch to the entire affair. And as part of the ceremony this afternoon, the St. Kitts and Nevis Defense Force will be mounting a guard of honor for Her Excellency Marcella Liburd Esquire JP, who will be officially installed as the Governor General of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, a guard of honor by the St. Kitts and Nevis Defense Force comprising of the troops drawn from the Alpha Company, the ACOI, and the Coast Guard Unit of the SKN Regiment. And it will be mounted right here at Government House anytime now as part of the official ceremony for the occasion. And just to recap, some of the dignitaries expected here this afternoon or this evening, where you may be, where you may reside in the diaspora, we have visiting officials such as Sir Rodney Williams, the Governor General of Antigua and Barbuda, the Most Honorable Dame Sandra Mason, the President of Barbados, the Honorable Philip Peer, Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Deacon Mitchell, the President, Dr. Didicus Jules, Director General of the OECS, and Mr. Tom Hines, the British High Commission of Barbados. Just a reminder, if um, you haven't informed the, pers the listeners and viewers at home, the order of the program uh, will begin with the arrival of the Honorable Prime Minister and the arrival of Her Excellency Miss Marcella Liburd, and the National Anthem of the Federation of St. Christopher at Nevis. That will be followed by the invocation by Reverend Sylvester Herbert, a senior pastor of the Wesleyan Holiness, Bastier and Connery. Uh, that will be followed by brief welcome remarks. And then the administration of the oaths, which will be delivered by Her Ladyship Tamara Gill, the resident High Court judge. And that will be followed by an address by Prime Minister, the Honorable Dr. Terence Drew. Following that will be the inaugural address by the Governor General, Her Excellency Marcella Liburd, JP. And then the national and discuss and bask in the moment, as it were. Speaking about basking in the moment, it's the sun is out in all of its pleasure at this moment uh, a bit earlier we had some drizzle rain we had some light clouds overhead but right now it's bright and sunny it's out in all of its splendor and the persons here at government house uh, many of them they have prepared for the weather just in case we might get some rain with their umbrellas as you can see on the screen there are a number of tents surrounding the grounds here at government house i came prepared as well it was very cloudy <laughs> earlier in the day so i have my umbrella in my little bag over there because i will not be caught wet in this at this very prestigious event if you're just joining us once again we are giving you live bringing you live coverage of the installation ceremony of the new Governor General of the Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis, Her Excellency Marcella Liburd, JP. We are live at Government House for the installation ceremony. Vera Galloway and myself, Jason Davis, are bringing a live commentary on ZIZ Radio and, of course, ZIZ TV and our various online platforms, including our YouTube channel and Facebook page. And as we can see, there's a cruise ship out in the harbor at this time as we are watching on the screen right about now. That's the Springfield Cemetery. If you are in tune to ZIZ TV or on our YouTube channel, and there you can see a number of persons making their way to Government House at this time. And other officials here, the Honorable Lanine Blanchett, the Speaker of the National Parliament, 
the Lordships, the Honorable Justice Ayen Morley QC, the Honorable Justice Evett Wallace QC, and the Honorable Tamara Gill QC. Your Honor Hailita Liburd, MH, the Deputy Governor General for Nevis, and Mr. Liburd, they are also here, along with the Ministers of Government, the Honorable Dr. Jeffrey Hanley, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Education, Youth, Social Development, Gender Affairs, Aging and Disability, and his lovely wife, Mrs. Hanley. The Right Honorable Dr. Denzel Douglas, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, International Trade, Industry, Commerce and Consumer Affairs, Economic Development and Investment. And on your screens, you see in the arrival of Mrs. Clark, the Minister, the Senator in the newly installed Labour Party government, she has just arrived. Senator Gard Wilkin, the Attorney General, he is among the gathering here at the Government House. He's the Minister of Justice and Legal Affairs. We can see the Honorable Congress Maynard as well, the Ministry of Utilities, Transport, Information, Communication and Technology and the Post, and Mrs. Maynard. On the screen we have the Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable Dr. Jeffrey Henley, uh, also the Minister of Education, Social Development, and a lovely shot of the crowd there, everyone anxiously awaiting the start of the ceremony here at Government House, the installation ceremony of the new Governor General, Her Excellency Marcella Liburd, JP. And the landscape here at uh, Government House is very green at this time because of the fact that we've been having some rain over the past weeks. Other persons here, the, the Honorable Samuel Duggins, the Minister of Agriculture, Fisheries, Marine Resources, Entrepreneurship, Cooperatives and Creative Economy, and Mrs. Duggins, and we've just seen the arrival of Senator, the Honorable Dr. Joyal Clark, the Minister of Sustainable Development, Environment, Climate Action, and the Constituency Empowerment. Also, the Honorable Senator, Isaline Philip, Junior Minister with Responsibility for Youth Empowerment, Social Development, Gender Affairs, Aging and Disability, and Dr. Marcus Natter, the Cabinet Secretary. There are a number of other dignitaries here as well as we go along in the program. We'll be outlining their names for you, but if you've just joined us, welcome to the installation ceremony of the new Governor General. Her Excellency Marcella Liburd, JP. And of course, the official ceremony. She was sworn in on Wednesday around midnight to the post of Governor General. So, what we are having here today is the installation or the inauguration ceremony of the new Governor General. Yes, for persons who might be wondering what exactly is an installation ceremony, uh, it's officially de defined as the official ceremony, whereas an official, such as a president or a governor general, is formally endowed with the powers and responsibilities of office. In some cases, it's called an inauguration ceremony. And as we see on the screen, we have the arrival of the Minister of Tourism, the Honorable Marsha Henderson. She is one of several government ministers, and to her right, our left, is the resident Taiwan, Taiwanese ambassador, Michael Lin. He and other members of the diplomatic corps are also here to witness this historic and momentous occasion. In fact, uh, yesterday at the Prime Minister's press engagement, he noted that it is historic and about time, in his words, that the Federation has a female Governor General. She's the fifth in the line and all four of her successors were all male. And I think she might be the youngest of them, if, I'm, if my memory serves correctly. Can you corroborate that, Mr. Galloway? Yes, um, I think you are correct, Jason. Before her, we had... Um, she is the fifth Governor General. Mm -hmm. Before her, we had... His Excellency 
Edmund Lawrence, also Sir Pobin Innes, there's also Sir Cuthbert Sebastian, and she's now Wait. taken over from S.W. Tapley Seaton, the <laughs> former Governor General. So we are here at Government House awaiting the official start of the installation ceremony. And you were speaking about the fact that she is the first female and a number of persons before that were saying that it's time for a female Governor General. I've seen it on social media as well. In fact, somebody had a proposal from about a year or two ago saying that they think it's time that the next person to be installed as the Governor General should be a female. Indeed. Yeah, as I mentioned before, the Prime Minister shared that same sentiment at his press conference. Now, I do not think that, I personally don't think that the gender has any bearing on the execution of her duties, but I think that the significance of appointing a woman to that position, it cannot go without mentioning. Uh, it is a step towards e gender equality throughout all sectors of society, and it cannot be omitted. And the... Her Excellency Marcella Leiber, she has been involved in a number of community activities over the years. In fact, she was a prominent netballer. I think she made the, the national team on several occasions. She also conducted a number of youth camps in the McKnight area. That's the area, Central Bastia, that she represented for a number of years so she is well known by many persons and of course it's an honor to have her being elevated to such a position in fact someone was saying that her mother that they used to call the um and library she should have been around to see that her only daughter has achieved such status in life. Yes, I interviewed Anne Liebert one time. Uh, I interviewed Anne Liebert uh, many years ago, many, many years ago, and many, many pounds ago. Um, and she was a very dynamic woman, and I believe that she would have been bursting at the seams with pride to see her daughter being elevated to this position as well. Now, I've just been informed that the Prime Minister is is unable to make it due to a flight delay so the deputy prime minister dr jeffrey henley will be acting in his stead and will most likely be delivering that address uh later in the program that i mentioned once again if you're just joining us we are bringing live coverage of the installation ceremony of the newly appointed governor general of saint kitts and nevis her excellency marcella Liebert, jp ZIZ is bringing you live coverage from Government House. I'm Jason Davis, along with Mr. Veer Galloway, giving live commentary of the proceedings. And as you can see on the live broadcast and online, scores of people are here anxiously awaiting the start of the ceremony and ready to bear witness to this very historic occasion. It can't be said enough. This is definitely historic the first female Governor General of St. Christopher and Nevis. And I think this might serve as a sort of an inspiration for other young women to see the heights that they can attain in life. Previously, with all male governor, ge governors general, some persons might have thought, oh, that's not for me, that's only for a certain type of people. But as you can see, the appointment is not as narrow as you might have earlier perceived. And the former Governor General, His Excellency S. W. Tapley Seaton, GCMG CBO, Casey JP LLD, in his farewell message, he took the opportunity to express thanks and appreciation to all those who assisted him in the discharge of his duties, and that included the staff here at Government House, the gardeners, and the other support staff who he said served diligently enabling him to perform his duties and he also said that it was a fulfilling experience 
communist does after having served for some 15 years as the first attorney general of an independent St. Kitts and Nevis. He also said that he was grateful to the persons who assisted in his journey, including his family, medical professionals, and the security services, and all who have been very supportive of his efforts to build on the structure here at Government House and its surroundings to ensure access to the People's House, as he called it, and to facilitate the activities of the Office of the Governor General. And as I said, the newly soon to be installed officially Governor General Marcella Leibert, she was born on the 10th of July. 1953 to Anne Eliza and Clement Liebert and after attending the Bastard Girls School she graduated there and she earned her Bachelor of Arts from the University of the West Indies sometime in 1976. She returned and began teaching. She was one of the popular teachers at the Kaon High School. She returned to her own studies, obtaining a Bachelor of Law with honors in 1992 from the Norman Manley Law School, where she continued her education, earning a legal education certificate in 1994. Uh, also, I would like to make a clarification to something that was said earlier when we were speaking about the list the previous governors general they are clement sir clement arundel cuthbert sebastian edmund lawrence tapley seat and tapley seaton uh proben innes was actually governor not governor general so yeah there is a distinction between the two titles so we just want to make that absolutely clear clear but it does not take away from the fact that marcella library is the fifth governor general and the first woman to hold that position so it is still historic and of course a strong turnout here at government house persons anxiously awaiting the start of this ceremony once again in case you missed it earlier I'll give you a brief order of the program um, after the arrival of Her Excellency Marcella Liebert. As I mentioned before, the Honorable Prime Minister is unable to make it due to uh, a flight, can, uh, the flight, the time of the flights. Um, that will be followed by the, re the National Anthem of the Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis. Next is the invocation by Reverend Sylvester Herbert, Senior Pastor of the Wesleyan Holiness, Bastier and Connery. And that will be followed by brief welcome remarks. And then the administration of the oaths to Her Excellency. And they will be administered by Her Ladyship Tamara Gill, resident High Court Judge, who coincidentally also um, swore her in as Governor General on February 1, if I remember correctly. Yes, February 1. That will be followed by an address which is expected to be delivered by Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable Dr. Jeffrey Hanley, in lieu of the Honorable Prime Minister. That will be followed by the inaugural address by the Governor General, Her Excellency Marcella Liebert, JP, the National Anthem of the Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis, and then a Guard of Honor, and then of course the reception afterwards. Now, I'm not certain if they're going to have fireworks like they did on the night of her swearing in, but we can only hope. It's always a fun time. And as part of the gathering here at Government House, there are a number of persons from various parts of the island showing their support to the new Governor General to be installed here later this afternoon. And just to give you a bit more history about Government House, it was then called Springfield House. That was in 1855 and was conveyed into trust to be used for public and other purposes as the Governor, Council and Assembly so declared and appointed. And sometime in October of 1855, the 
Committee of Public Buildings commissioned the repairs to Springfield House and we have seen a number of repairs done to Springfield House over the years and in 1856 in February 1856 Springfield House was appointed again for use as a residence of the rector of Bastyr the venerable Archdeacon German was the rector then Springfield House would continue to be used as a rectory by successive archdeacons I think until 1882 and as I said before in 1883 after Archdeacon Gibbs retired Springfield House was declared as the official residence of the head of government Charles Manuel Eldridge was the Lieutenant Governor of St. Kitts from 1883 to October 1888. He was acting, I think, in 1885. Charles Manuel Eldridge was the first head of government to occupy the Springfield House. And from that time onwards, the building was called Government House. And Government House today remains the official residence of the Governor General of St. Kitts and Nevis. And of course the Governor General um, serves in most cases a ceremonial position but he or she is the head of state and the in this case King's representative for the Federation before the Governor General was the Queen's representative but with the, pass the passing of Queen Elizabeth II and King Charles III, named as the new monarch. The Governor General is noted as the King's representative and plays a role in, I think, the signing and gazetting of new laws and is appointed upon the advice of the Prime Minister. And I, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe that he or she is consulted in certain matters, legal matters, when it comes to, um, especially constitutional matters of affairs. State, yes. yes, yes, yes. So, they do play an integral part in the running of the country and the way forward for the Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis. As okay. you can hear in the background, there's a combination of steel band and string band music playing, keeping the mood light and lively here as we wait for the official start of the ceremony. ZIZ will be bringing you live coverage of the event live on radio, TV, and our various social media pages, including our website, www.zizonline.com, our Facebook page, and our YouTube channel, ZIZ Online. So I hope you'll stay with us for the remainder of the proceedings. We'll be bringing you running commentary for the remainder of the evening. I'm Jason Davis, and with me is Mr. Veer Galloway. And among the many dignitaries here as well, we have the leader of Her Majesty's opposition, Premier of Nevis, the Honorable Matt Brantley, the also other members of the National Assembly here with us this afternoon, nope. the Honorable Michelle Slack, she is the President of the Nevis Island Assembly, she was recently installed to that position as President of the Nevis Island Assembly. The Honorable Members of the Nevis Island Assembly and their spouses, they are here as well. Your Excellency Sir Edmund Lawrence, GCMGOBE, JP, the former Governor General of St. Kitts and Lady Lawrence, also here to witness this occasion. The Right Excellent and the Right Honorable Dr. Sir Kennedy Simmons, KCMG, National Hero and his wife, Lady Simmons, is also in the huge gathering here this afternoon. Members of the Diplomatic and the Consular Corps and accredited chief representatives of regional and international organizations as well. In fact, Dr. Didicus Jules, the Director General of the OECS and other visiting dignitaries and representatives are here, members of the Christian Council and the Evangelical Association as well, members of the clergy and other senior government officials. 
This is once again live coverage of the installation ceremony of Her Excellency Marcella Lybird. I remember seeing uh, the Minister of Environment and Constituency Empowerment arriving, the Honorable Joyelle Clark. And I think she posted on her Facebook page not too long ago how proud she herself was very, how proud she was of um, Her Excellency's achievements. Uh, social media has been abuzz with congratulations to the Tour to Excellency Marcella Liebert on her appointment. And as I said before, her appointment can serve as an inspiration for other young women, showing them what they can achieve, what heights they can achieve in their lives and careers. Speaking of careers, Her Excellency has had a quite a decorated one. Um, being, and I think one of her most notable accomplishments is being first speaker in the National Assembly, first female, sorry, first female speaker in the National Assembly. But aside from that, she was post independence, pardon, post independence, yes, post independence, yes, must clarify that. Um, but aside from that, she was a teacher, lawyer, senator, and at one time acting prime minister. Yes, I, rem was, I remember yes. distinctly it so it coincided when. Then Prime Minister Douglas was away, and it coincided with International Women's Day. So, it you know is almost like the aligning of stars that uh, Marcella Liebert would be named acting Prime Minister for that period on International Women's Day. And she said she was very proud at that moment as well. Other senior military officials gathered here as well. Lieutenant Colonel J. Anthony Comrie, the commander of the St. Kitts and Nevis Defense Force, and Hilwai Brandy, QPM, the Commissioner of Police, and other members of the High Command and other rank and file members of the Royal St. Kitts and Nevis Police Force. Also in the gathering as well. Mr. Terence James, the Commissioner of Prisons and Corrections as well. Other members of the armed forces and uniformed bodies are gathered here. And we are awaiting the official start of the installation ceremony here at Government House. Some nice pan music being played, string band music in the background. There is a nice view of Springfield House way back then, now called Government House, on the northern side of the Springfield Cemetery. As I mentioned before, there has been an outpouring of support for Her Excellency on social media. One such tribute on Her Excellency's page comes from, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing her name correctly, Corinne J. Corinne J. Phipps. Um, as part of her tribute, she says, as a former educator and attorney by, professor, for, for, by profession, Her Excellency Marcella Liebert has climbed the ranks of leadership from elective politics to Speaker of the St. Kitts and Nevis National Parliament, Parliament to now becoming the Federation's first female Governor General. An avid netball player and athlete, Marcella has lived by the principles she taught her students and mentees. No excuses. Get the job done no matter what. Her work and accolades serve as a reminder to the other to other women and girls that they too can excel to exceptional heights in service and realize success. So long as they can think it and believe it, soon they will achieve it. Women and young girls of all political persu persuasions should believe that one day they can too. Congratulations to Her Excellency Marcella Liebert on her appointment as the first female governor of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. And that post is just a sample of what has been um, pouring in on her Facebook page since her appointment and the swearing in earlier this week. So well, these, we're going to go live to the stage for the official start of the ceremony.
I now invite everyone to please stand for the arrival of Her Excellency Marcella Liburd. Do remain standing for the playing of our national anthem. remain standing for the invocation by Reverend Sylvester Herbert. A pleasant good afternoon to all. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are the source of all life, freedom, and authority. You have issued a gracious invitation to come confidently to your throne of grace. And with your invitation, you have given us promises of all that you will do when we honor your word. We come before you in solemn yet thankful prayer in this installation service of Her Excellency Marcella Liburd as Governor General of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. We thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon our nation, from its shores to its mountains from its countryside to its cities. In a special way, Lord, we ask you to pour forth your blessings upon our Governor General as she begins her special service to the nation. Bless her with the wisdom of Solomon and the courage of Esther. Infuse her with love, grace, humility, and dignity as she accepts the heavy responsibilities of our nation's highest office. Keep her always faithful to her solemn pledge and enable her to bear true allegiance to our nation and its constitution. May she seek the common good of all and join hands with all our fellow citizens in the ongoing work of building a nation where peace abounds, where freedom is enjoyed and justice is served. Give our new Governor General, our legislators and all those in government service an ever greater measure of understanding as they address the difficult problems of our times. O oh Lord, grace this ceremony 
with the fragrance of your presence. And may it linger long after this special moment is past. May the joy and hope you give preserve us in a strong bond of fellowship and true brotherhood. And may your peace that surpasses all understanding be with us always. We make this prayer in thy holy name. Amen. Kindly be seated all. Your Excellency, Marcella Liebert, JP, Governor General of the Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis. Your Excellency, Sir Rodney Williams, GCMG, KGN, KSTJ, MBBS, PhD, Governor General of Antigua and Barbuda, and Lady Williams. Your Excellency, the Most Honorable Dame Sandra Mason, FB, GCMG, DA, KC, LLD, President of Barbados. The Honorable Lanine Blanchett, Speaker of the National Assembly. Their Lordships, the Honorable Justice Ian Marley KC, the Honorable Tamara Gill and Mr. Gill, Your Honor, Hylita Liebert, OBE, MH, Deputy Governor General for Nevis, the Honorable Dr. Jeffrey Hanley, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Education, Youth, Social Development, Gender Affairs, Aging and Disability, and Mrs. Hanley. The Right Honorable Dr. Denzil Douglas, Minister of Foreign Affairs, International Trade, Industry, Commerce, and Consumer Affairs, Economic Development and Investment. The Honorable Conris Maynard, Minister of Public Infrastructure and Utilities, Transport, Information, Communication and Technology, and Posts, and Mrs. Maynard. The Honorable Marsha Henderson, Minister of Tourism, Civil Aviation, International Transport, Employment and Labor, and Urban Development. The Honorable Samuel Duggins, Minister of Agriculture, Fisheries, Marine Resources, Entrepreneurship, Cooperatives and Creative Economy, and Mrs. Duggins. The Honorable Senator Dr. Joel Clark, Minister of Sustainable Development, Environment, Climate Action, and Constituency Empowerment. The Honorable Senator Iseline Phillip, Junior Minister with Responsibility for Youth Empowerment, Social Development, Gender Affairs, Aging, and Disability. Dr. Marcus Natter, Cabinet Secretary. Honorable Mark Brantley, Premier of Nevis and Mrs. Brantley. Other members of the National Assembly. Other members of the Nevis Island Assembly and their spouses. The Right Excellent and the Right Honorable Dr. Sir Kennedy Simmons, KCMG National Hero and Lady Simmons, Dame Constant Mitchum, members of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps and accredited chief representatives of regional and international organizations, members of the Christian Council and Evangelical Association, members of the clergy, permanent secretaries and other senior government officials, Lieutenant Colonel J. Anthony Comrie, Commander of the St. Kitts and Nevis Defense Force. Mr. Hilroy Brandy, QPM, 
commissioner of police and other members of the high command and other rank and file members of the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force. Mr. Terence James, Commissioner of Prisons and Corrections. Other members of the armed forces and uniformed bodies, former members of parliament, family members of Her Excellency Marcella Liebert, JP. Partners, executives, and members of the St. Kitts and Nevis Labour Party, members of civil society, other specially invited guests, members of the diaspora, viewers and listeners via various media social platforms, citizens, residents, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Government House St. Kitts. We are delighted to have all of you present to witness this historic moment, a significant ceremony in our nation's history. We are here to witness the installation of our fifth governor general and our first female governor general. Yes, that is a cause for applause. Excellent. We are now going to have the administration of the oaths, her ladyship, Tamara Gill, our resident high court judge, will be administering the oaths of office and the oath of allegiance to Her Excellency. That I will faithfully bear true allegiance. That I will faithfully bear true allegiance to His Majesty King Charles III, to His Majesty King Charles III, his heirs and successors, his heirs and successors, according to law. According to law. So help me God. So help me God. Oath of office. I, Marcella Althea Liburd, I, Marcella Althea Liburd, do swear, do swear that I will honor, that I will honor, uphold, uphold, and preserve, and preserve the Constitution of St. Christopher and Nevis and the law, the Constitution of St. Christopher and Nevis and the law, that I will conscientiously, that I will conscientiously, impartially, impartially, and to the best of my ability, and to the best of my ability, discharge my duties as, Discharge my duties as and do right and do right to all manner of people to all manner of people without fear or favor without fear or favor affection or ill will affection or ill will so help me God so help me God
Yes, so the business transaction is complete. And I must crave your indulgence and offer our apologies for this late start. We were really waiting and anticipating an on-time arrival of our Prime Minister, who is in St. Lucia with his other Caribbean colleagues for a meeting. He is presently en route, but in the meantime, the show must go on. And so, with that being said, I now invite our Deputy Prime Minister to deliver remarks on behalf of our Prime Minister, Dr. Terence Drew, in the person of Dr. Jeffrey Hanley. Your Excellency, Marcelo Leibard, JP, Governor General of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. Your Excellency, Sir Rodney Williams, Governor General of Antigua and Barbuda and Lady Williams. Your Excellency, the Most Honorable Dame Sandra Mason, the President of Barbados. The Lordships, the Honorable Justice Molly QC, the Honorable Justice Yvette Wallace QC, and the Honorable Tamara Gill. Your Honor, Hailita Liber, Deputy Governor General for Nevis. Your Excellency, Sir Edmund Lawrence and Lady Lawrence. The Right Excellent and the Right Honorable Dr. Sir Kennedy Simmons national hero and Lady Simmons. It is indeed a delight to have you here with us. I stand here with great pride as I speak to you on this significant day. Your Excellency Marcella Leibard Esquire JP, it is such a pleasure and honor to be here today to witness this momentous event, the installation ceremony of the very first female Governor General in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. Your Excellency, your remarkable achievements are an example of what it means to be a patriot. Your passion and love for your nation and people are exemplary and have been the driving force throughout your career. You have lived a life of service to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis in numerous capacities. As a teacher, an athlete, a lawyer, a netballer, a politician, a parliamentarian, a speaker in the House of Assembly, and now the highest honor, Governor General. You remind us that true leadership is not measured in the honors or the distinctions stacked up behind someone's name. Although today you take on yet another title among many. Rather, true leadership is measured in what you do for those around you. It is measured in an ability to reach out and build a promising future for all. We need your vision for better St. Kitts and Nevis as we move towards our concept of transforming our nation into a sustainable island state, a vision of innovation and progression. In this moment of unprecedented change, I recognize the significant movement towards gender parity within our federation, an international effort of the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party administration. We have demonstrated what it means to be committed to gender equality since taking office. The dedication is reflected in our parliament, which currently has the highest number of female members in its history. And now we have once again 
made history with the first female governor general. The dedication can also be seen in our nominations on boards of, of government entities and within the civil service where women have been granted equal access to the highest advisory and technical posts. Today, as our country takes this important step, I'm confident that we have gained a leader who will ensure that the change we witness in one of hope, fairness, and a brighter future for all of us. Your Excellency, it, is, it will be an honor to work alongside you as you make this historic role your own. Thank you for taking up this mantle to serve in true patriotism as the head of state, the first female governor general of St. Kitts and Nevis. I am indeed pleased and proud. God bless you and God bless our beloved nation. that height as yet. So thank you. Thank you, Honorable Deputy Prime Minister, for delivering those remarks. Very, very well received. Now, it is my distinct honor to inform this gathering, those in person and those via other platforms, that His Majesty King Charles III has given approval to confer the honor of Dame Grand Cross of the most of the Order of St. Michael and St. George on Miss Liburd, Her Excellency Marcella Liburd. So it is now my pleasure to invite Her Excellency Dame Marcella Liburd to deliver her inaugural address as the Governor General, the first female Governor General of the Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis. You may be seated. A very pleasant good afternoon to all. I would like to adopt the protocol so ably established, but permit me to acknowledge a few of the persons present here with us today. Your Excellency Sir Rodney Williams, Governor General of Antigua and Barbuda, and Lady Williams. Your Excellency, the Most Honorable Dame Sandra Mason, President of Barbados, thank you. The Honorable Laniel Blanchett, Speaker of the National Assembly. Your Honor, Hailita Liburd, Deputy Governor General for Nevis. The Honorable Dr. Jeffrey Hanley, Deputy Prime Minister. The Right Honorable Dr. Denzel Douglas, former Prime Minister. The Honorable Congress Maynard and Mrs. Maynard. The Honorable Marsha Henderson. The Honorable Samuel Duggins and Mrs. Duggins. The Honorable Senator Dr. Joel Clark. The Honorable Senator Isaleen Phillip. Dr. Marcus Natter, Cabinet Secretary. Premier Brantley 
and Mrs. Brandley and other members of the NIA and their spouses. Members of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps, Dame Constance Mitchum, members of the clergy, permanent secretaries and government officials, Lieutenant Colonel Comrie, Mr. Hilroy Brandy, the Commissioner of Police, former members of Parliament, members of civil society, members of my family and my close friends, members of the diaspora, citizens and residents of St. Kitts and Nevis. Again, a very pleasant good afternoon to all of you. Today, I stand before you as your new Governor General. <laughs> Humbled by the awesome task ahead. Grateful for the trust bestowed on me by the government and people of St. Christopher and Nevis. And mindful of the blood sweat and tears, the sacrifices made by our ancestors, those on whose shoulders we stand. Today, I am positioned to follow in the huge footsteps of my predecessors in office, Sir Clement Arundel, Sir Cuthbert Sebastian, Sir Edmund Lawrence, and Sir Tapley Seaton who have so ably served our proud federation at the highest level with one conspicuous difference. They were all male. <laughs> As the first female to be elevated to the office of head of state, I am acutely aware of the history of the moment on my journey in service to the people of St. Christopher and Nevis and to the nation that I love so dearly. I am fully cognizant of my role as Governor General, and in the spirit of my oaths, I affirm my commitment to serve all of my countrymen and women and my beloved country with humility, selflessness, excellence, and integrity. I am compelled to pay homage to those who walked with me along this journey whose guidance is responsible for my presence here today. First and foremost, I give honor to Almighty God for his mercies, his grace, and his strength that filled me with the spiritual fortitude to withstand and overcome the tumultuous challenges over the years. I've been blessed to attain myriad accomplishments and to be imbued with the goodwill and empathy to serve humanity in several capacities. The late Reverend Dr. Luther, Martin Luther King Jr. said it best. Everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You only need a heart of grace and a soul generated by love. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. spoke those words exactly 55 years ago on 4th February 1968 to his congregation in Atlanta, Georgia. Is it coincidental that today is also the 4th of February? <laughs> As I reflect on this call to service, I invite all our citizens and residents to come and do the hard work of heart and soul as defined by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King if we are to build our country on greatness. Secondly, I wish to record my profound appreciation 
to the government led by the Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Terence Drew, who endorsed my nomination and appointment to serve as Governor General. <laughs> Thus being the King's representative here and the commanding chief of the Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis. I deem it a singular honor to be the candidate of choice in whom they have reposed the expressed confidence sent to this esteemed office. Our government's commitment to gender equality resonates powerfully throughout the history of our twin islands today and will be indelibly etched in the annals of our proud country. Thirdly, it would be remiss of me not to make special mention of the significant people who would have guided and encouraged me along my personal and professional pathway that in many instances was strewn with difficult circumstances that taught me some of life's most valuable lessons. How to cope with disappointments, how to pick up the pieces and move on, how to be tolerant of others and of differing views, and how to forgive even in the most difficult circumstances. I single out my family members, especially my parents. My father was from Nevis, Premier, <laughs> and my mother was from Antigua, Governor General. <laughs> <laughs> now about deceased, my siblings, those alive, and those deceased, and my only offspring, Jai, <laughs> and all my other family members, who stood with me at critical junctures of the journey. I must make special mention of my mother, mentor and rock, and library. <laughs> who taught me myriad lessons that informed and inspired my ability to face the odds with courage and confidence. May she and those who have passed on like that biblical crowd of witnesses, joining this celebration from their abode of eternal rest. I recognize and acknowledge in the same breath that circle of individuals whose gems, those gems who surrounded me at every turn through sadness and joy, through losses and victories, and provided the support, guidance, and inspiration and strengthened my resolve to persevere. You know who you are. Many of you are here today sharing in the celebration of this history-making event. Some have come from abroad insisting that they must be present in person. Others, some of whom really wanted to be here, and I think right now of Alfonso Bridgewater and Donna Morton, are glued to the streaming of this event perhaps even dressed as if present at this ceremony. To all of you, I am eternally grateful. To the Colonel, officers, and rank and file of the St. Kitts and Nevis Defense Force, as your commanding chief, I wish to register my appreciation for your loyalty, professionalism, and hard work. It's an honor to see you here on parade. I can assure you that your commitment to service and to safety and security of our Federation, working collaboratively with the law enforcement agencies will not be taken lightly or for granted. During my tenure, I will engage and interact with you and see to your best interests. What is the significance of the position of Governor General? A question frequently asked. Many see it as a position of pomp and ceremony. Others as a figurehead, just a representative of the British monarchy, in this case, King Charles III. And yet others as someone aloof and apart from the citizenry. I wish to dispel those notions and assure you that yes, there's pomp and ceremony at times. Yes, I am the representative of King Charles III, but as your governor general, I am committed to and will act in accordance with the Constitution, the oath of office, and the oath of allegiance that I took in the first instance on the 1st of February and repeated today as a formal acceptance 
of my appointment as Governor General. The position demands firm leadership, critical decision making in accordance with the Constitution and the law, and unswerving commitment to integrity in all matters. As a woman who has served my country at various levels of leadership and in multiple roles, as educator, mentor for the youth, national netball player, national netball coach, sports administrator, legal advocate, women's rights advocate, senator, deputy speaker, speaker, parliamentary representative for the people of Central Bastille, and minister of government, I am confident that the experience garnered in these various roles will enhance my performance as Governor General. My readiness for service to this country, its citizens and residents is paramount, unqualified and legendary. I therefore stand committed to making a difference in the execution of my duties and to make myself available to the citizens and residents of our beloved Federation. In October last year, I performed one of the important parliamentary functions of the Governor General, when as the Governor General's deputy, I presented the throne speech at the opening of the new parliament, which outlined the programs of the new government for the next five years. The vision for transformation of the Federation into a small island sustainable state was the thrust of that presentation. I wish to wholeheartedly embrace that vision in the execution of the duties assigned to me as Governor General. We in this small island developing state face many challenges, not the least of which include emerging from the ravages of the COVID-19 pandemic, addressing inequality and poverty, the impact of the ongoing war in Europe, the effects of climate change on food security and the environment, provision of proper health care and education, promoting the good governance agenda, providing job opportunities, especially for the youth, the high cost of living, the relationship between St. Christopher and Nevis, and resolving our water and energy issues. It takes serious decision makers at all levels and bold decisions to address and find solutions to these ongoing and emerging challenges. It will be unpleasant at times. It is not always going to be smooth. But constant communication and consultation will make them easier to be resolved. While I am confident that there's the political will and the competence to build resilience on our pathway to creating sustainability, I am also fully aware that government must play a big part, but government cannot do everything. As head of state, I will wholeheartedly assume my role and lend my experience, support, and goodwill to ensure that St. Christopher and Nevis transitions to being a sustainable island state and move to that new level of nationhood envisaged in our thrust to embrace and inculcate our identity as Kittitians and divisions and as a nation. The Buckley's Uprising Monument Park is a step in the right direction. I am committed to educating our people, especially our children, about the role and responsibilities of the Governor General and about the history of Government House. This land is ours. I therefore call on us all as patriots and as responsible citizens and residents to work together, Kittitians and divisions, to build together and to pray together. You, all citizens and residents, also have a major role to play as builders of our country, for it is the faith and determination of our people on which the success of our country depends. The world has changed, and we must change with it. And while we must embrace the newest technologies, methods, and systems, we must never forget the unchangeable values of honesty, 
hard work, tolerance, fair play, loyalty, courage, and patriotism. These values, which have defined our progress and our character throughout our history, are being replaced by an acceptance of any and everything. We must return to these true values in our homes, in our schools, in our churches, and in our communities, if our country is to make any significant progress going forward. Every inauguration is a new chapter in our nation's history. Today is no different. Let us bury old hatreds and look to new hope as we come together, petitions and divisions alike, to make our vision and the transformation of our nation a reality. Thank you, and God bless the Federation of St. Christopher and Jesus. Please be seated. So, Her Excellency Dame Marcella Liburd and her inaugural address. Very, very well done. I love teachers, and I know each and every one of us here can have a very, very fond memory of our teachers. And I must admit, that is one of the list of positions, list of role on the role that Her Excellency had as, you know, as she outlined nicely all the different functions she has performed over her journey. And we are very, very privileged, and we are looking very, very hopeful with much expectation of our first Governor General. With us, with us, her ex the Governor General of St. Christopher and Nevis has expressed that she would wish for the Prime Minister to be able to present some remarks to us, and I think it is only fitting that our Governor General's wish is um, granted. So I am going to crave just a little more of your patience with us here at Government House while the Honorable Prime Minister and his Caribbean colleagues um, grace us with their presence. They should be here very, very shortly. Thank you so much. And I must admit, during the preparations for this ceremony, there was the little back and forth between the Deputy Prime Minister and myself. Do we want tents? Don't want tents. Consult the Met Office, but you know, sometimes that is what weather does to us. It does exactly the opposite that we wish for it to be. And so we were all hopeful for gracious weather. In the preparations, we just said, kept saying, rain go towards Sandy Point. Rain go towards Sandy Point. So we can literally see the rain coming and we'll just gently say, go that way, go that way. But then sadly we got mm, just about after one this afternoon when all of the chairs, literally all of the chairs were already in position. And we were like, okay, this is going to be it until in the wee hours of the morning. So we are very grateful and thankful that we have the fair weather because we really wanted our guests to enjoy a very, very open um, environment here at Government House so that you can feel relaxed and not a bit, you know, claustrophobic and that sort of thing. So we were very, very thankful that we have fair weather with us this afternoon because we do not want persons to be scrabbling and getting their umbrellas because we do not want your lovely attire to get wet. Now, in the preparation for this, we had 
Well, it was a lot to go in the, and as we stated that we did need to have a very significant event to at least have as many persons here sharing in the ceremony, this significant ceremony of the installation of our first governor general. Female. Our first female, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. First female governor general. And so um, it was very um, important that we make sure that everyone came and felt very comfortable. Um, we really wanted to have representation from her Caribbean colleagues, and we are very thankful for the, the excellencies in the persons of Sir Rodney and Dame Sandra being with us here today. The other heads of state across the Caribbean had other conflict um, in terms of their schedules, in terms of their uh, Independence Day ceremonies coming up and the like, but uh, all of the colleagues expressed their regrets from Grenada to Belize to St. Vincent, and believe it or not, those are all female heads of state. So we are really on the bandwagon, not to put you on the spot, Sir Rodney, like that there we need to force the hand in Antigua. We're not going to go there. <laughs> but the, the expressions of regrets, they were very well received from the, our cabinet, uh, her Caribbean colleagues, sorry, and we are very thankful for that. We're going to wait just a few more minutes. They are right here, excellent. Excellent. Natural beauty, you know. Tell. And we are now seeing the arrival of Prime Minister, the Honorable Dr. Terence Drew. He was slightly delayed due to an engagement overseas, but he expressed his desire to be part of the ceremony. And Her Excellency, Her Excellency Dame Marcella Leibert also expressed her desire for him to say a few words at this very historic occasion. So as we can see on our screens, the convoy including the Prime Minister, is being escorted up the road towards Government House. He shall be here within uh, one minute, I would estimate, to deliver brief remarks at today's ceremony. Um, Jason, what are your thoughts about the inaugural speech of Dame Her Excellency Master the Life? In a word, it was quite inspiring because uh, she mentioned, as I said earlier, that her attainment of this role can serve as a signal to other young women and to other persons generally that you can achieve anything in life if you so desire and put your mind and efforts towards it. Um, and she spoke of the importance of service and that you don't need to be from a certain background to serve. You don't need to have um, certain... You don't need to have match your subject and verbs to serve. It just takes a willing heart and um, the effort to do so. Prime Minister Drew has just arrived and he is now making his way to this stage where he will make, will deliver brief remarks to the attendees. As you can see on our screen, he's being ex on our screen, he's being escorted, escorted to the stage, welcomed by the deputy, gov the deputy prime minister, and we'll now go back to the ceremony for the presentation by Prime Minister Drew. Give me a Good evening, all. But let me, of course, apologize for being a bit late. <laughs> I traveled to St. Lucia for an OECS meeting, and the meeting was to discuss 
how we will solve interregional travel. <laughs> and so I was expected to be back here around 3 o'clock. So it says everything about interregional travel. <laughs> Traveling back with me is the Prime Minister of Grenada, Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell, and also Prime Minister Peer of St. Lucia, who is also here with me. Also, the head of the OECS Authority, Dr. Didicus Jules. And so I want to welcome them as well, and they will join us shortly. I understand that my speech has already been given, <laughs> and I want to sincerely thank the Deputy Prime Minister for filling in, filling in and making sure that the program goes on. But I, of course, could not have allowed this event to go without having the opportunity to say a few words. And so I would like to sincerely thank Her Excellency, Governor General, Ma Dean, Dean, that means it's here already. <laughs> Excellent, for allowing me a few moments to say a few words. Today's event for me is extremely important and for us as a cabinet and for us as a country. It is a significant milestone, a milestone that had been long coming and we possibly should have achieved it already. But nothing is really achieved before its time. In today's age, in a world that is striving still to find its balance of what is equity and democracy, in a world that is imperfect, but is still a world worth fighting for, and in doing so, it means that we have to forever strive to be better than we were before. And equity is one of those things that we must strive for, for it strengthens our ability to survive and to build strong and vibrant societies. This glass ceiling that is being shattered today marks a great step in that direction, in ensuring that our country joins that group where we are striving to establish equity as far as possible. Today, it is about gender. For I've always felt that no nation can truly arrive at its full potential, or even close, if all its constituents are not considered to be on equal footing. It does not mean that everybody will be exactly the same, but it means that we'll have equal opportunity. And just by achieving that equity in gender, everyone benefits. Men benefit. Children benefit. The society benefit. And of course, women, as is obvious, also benefit. The GDP grows just by having a more equal atmosphere of opportunity for our people are having equity. It means that everybody can have that opportunity to express themselves fully and achieve their potential, which adds to the collective achievement, which of course would be much higher. 
And so the, today's achievement is not just to say that women have arrived, but it's to say that all of us have indeed arrived with what has happened here today. And so, I want to say that we should be extremely proud as a country and as a nation that the conditions are such that would have created the moment where we can finally say that in St. Kitts and Nevis, for all the years women would have struggled, heading most of the households, keeping all the families, or mostly all the families together, ensuring that children are taken care of, men are taken care of, and the country and the whole is taken care of. That today we say to the world that St. Kitts and Nevis has advanced, and we are once again charting that new course of ensuring that all have equal opportunity, and especially our women that deserve a round of applause. And so, Your Excellency, it is with a great depth of gratitude who was raised fundamentally by women, understanding the sacrifices, that you would have been one who would have contributed, I think, more to public life than anybody in various capacities here today. Your life is a life of sacrifice and dedication, dedication to the common good and not dedication to just selfhood. You are a stark example, not only for women, but for all of us in this country. And we should embody what you represent, and what you represent is country above self. And I finally say, sincerest congratulations, and may you have an extremely successful tenure, and may your service to your fellow men continues with stellar example. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Prime Minister. And we are so grateful and very, very, very thankful that you were able to be here in person, in time, to witness this historic moment in our nation. So thank you for those words, Honorable Prime Minister, and welcome to your OECS Prime Ministers, Honorable Philip Pierre and Honorable Deacon Mitchell. A general in the person of Her Excellency Dame Marcella Leiber, GCMG JP. We are going to stand for the national anthem shortly, after which there will be a guard of honor when our Governor General, Her Excellency Dame Marcella Leibert, GCMG JP, will be receiving her royal salute, after which there will be a cocktail reception. So after the national anthem, we are going to invite Her Excellency, along with their excellencies, <laughs>
and there you had the official installation of Her Excellency Dame Marcella Leibard and we also heard a brief but inspiring address by the Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis, the Honorable Dr. Terence Drew. And he was accompanied from St. Lucia by the Prime Minister of St. Lucia, J. Pierre, and Deacon Mitchell out of Grenada. And in the address by Dame Asala Liebert, she paid homage to those who came before her, Sir Clement Arundel, Sir Cuthbert Sebastian, Sir Edmund Lawrence, and Sir Tapley Seaton. And her address was very inspiring. And, of course, a lot of persons elated to have witnessed this swearing-in or the installation ceremony of the first female Governor-General, Dame Her Excellency Marcella Leibert, JP. Uh, and the ceremony is one of historic moment for all nationals, especially all women who continue to blaze the trail of national development in St. Kitts and Nevis. And that too was highlighted by the Deputy Prime Minister who gave the address and also the Prime Minister. Also of note, during the ceremony, Her Excellency was awarded the Dame Grand Cross of the Order of St. Michael and St. George. So she is now officially Her Excellency Dame Marcella Liebert, GCMG JP. That is her new official title as the fifth Governor General. And in her speech, as you mentioned, she paid homage to those who came before, and she also gave what she said, and I quote her, unswerving commitment to integrity in all matters, which I think is quite important considering the Governor General is conducted, as you said, um, is consulted, as you said earlier, in matters of state. Um, she said it's more than just a ceremonial position, but she pledged to work for the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. And presently, the Yard of Honor is going to be drawn up in front of the entrance to Government House. And there you see members of the St. Kitts and Nevis Defense Force. They are lined up in front of the Government House and they comprise of the Alpha Company and the Coast Guard Unit of the St. Kitts and Nevis Defense Force. Number of persons have gathered to make sure that they get a first hand view of what is taking place here at Government House. As you mentioned, the Guard of Honor is taking place just in front of the entrance to Government House. The first Guard of Honor under the tenure of the newly installed Governor General, Her Excellency Dame Marcella Liebert, GCMG JP. And in her address as well, Jason, she called on the entire population of St. Kitts and Nevis to give a service of love, as you mentioned before, bringing together uh, each and every one. And she pledged that she will be a Governor General for each and every one here in St. Kitts and Nevis. Mm -hmm. It's always important to um, know that persons in authority have expressed their commitment to serve each and every one irrespective of what some may use to divide us whether it's gender political affiliation race creed color with religious affiliation it's important to note that persons of these types of offices are here to serve 
each and every one of us. And the master of the library, she is one of the youngest governor generals to serve, apart from His Excellency S.W. Tapley Seaton. I think he was 65 when he took up that position. And now Dame Marcella Lybert, at the age of 70 years, has been installed as the fifth Governor General of St. Kitts and the Nevis. He had Sir Clement Arundel, Sir Cuthbert Sebastian, Sir Edmund Lawrence, then we had Sir S.W. Tapley Seaton, and now Dame, Her Excellency, Marcella Lybert. Just to add a bit more information on the previous Governor's General, Sir Clement Arundel served from 1983 to 1996. Sir Cuthbert Sebastian served from 96 to 2013. His Excellency Sir Edmund Lawrence served from 2013 to 2015. And Sir Samuel Weymouth Tapley Seaton served from September 1, 2015 until January 31 of 2023. Photographers are on hand taking, capturing images of the Guard of Honor that's currently ongoing at Government House. And just a reminder, if you're joining us, you've come in on the tail end of live coverage of the installment installation ceremony of Her Excellency Marcella Lybird, GCMG JP, the new Governor General of the Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis. And there we see Dame Her Excellency Marcella Lybird inspecting the ranks of the Guard of Honor being drawn up in front of the entrance of Government House. One of the many duties that a Governor General is responsible for, you'd see the Governor General usually at the Independence Parade also um, taking the salute and viewing the parade and inspecting the troops as it were at such occasions. The Governor General also hosts dignitaries, various ambassadors um, from countries across the globe who present their credentials either as newly appointed or uh, renewing their term as it were. Um, and I remember several years, well a few years ago, there was a conference of Governors General um, here where they spoke on relevant matters to the districts that they serve across the region. And I'm assuming, well, of course, if there is another one um, held either here or abroad, Dame Marcella would be uh, representing the Federation in at such an event. And so history was witnessed on Wednesday, that was the 1st of February, when the first female Governor General was sworn in in the person of now Dame Her Excellency Marcella Leibard JP and that was during a brief and significant ceremony at Government House around midnight and if you've just joined us Dame Her Excellency Marcella Leibard succeeded His Excellency Samuel Weymouth Tapley Seaton GCMG CBO QC JP LLD and she was administered the oath of office and oath of allegiance making her the fifth governor general of the federation of St. Kitts and Nevis and I think that the timing is interesting to note as well this being the first of February and February is celebrated as Black History Month in many countries around the world and here in St. Kitts and Nevis it's History and Heritage Month so I think it's just, you know, accolade upon accolade upon accolade that, this, that just points to the very historic nature of this moment, her being the first female Governor General during Black History Month, during History and Heritage Month, 
it's it's as if the stars just came together for this occasion and we must remind persons as well that before being appointed as the Governor General Dame Her Excellency Master Libert she served as the Federation's deputy and that was since I think it was in September of 2022 and the surname of the Governor General Dame Her Excellency Ambassador Leibert, it was attended by a small group of invitees and right now the general public has that opportunity to share in this historic moment during this instant of the first female Governor General here at Government House. And I said, as I said before, a number of persons are extremely elated to have witnessed the swearing in of the Federation's first female Governor General. And of course ZIZ is very proud to be a part of this event as well, bringing you live coverage on ZIZ Radio, ZIZ TV, and our various social media platforms, such as, including our website, www.zizonline.com, our Facebook page, and our YouTube channel, ZIZ Online. We are committed to bring national events, historic events such as these, to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis who live within the Federation and in the diaspora, thanks to the miracle of modern technology and the Internet. And Jason, we must say a big thank you to the entire technical team, led by Bevin Wilkinson. We also had Scottisha Hendrickson, Cali Blake, and Cleon Bradshaw. We must also say thank you to Aiken Maynard and Lee Davis. They assisted with the broadcast of this installation ceremony here at the Government House. So right now what we are seeing is the band, the St. Kitts and Nevis Defense Force Band. They are making their way As we wrap up this ceremony here this evening, Jason, what are your thoughts about what is taking place or what took place earlier today? Well, I feel very honored uh, actually to be a part of this celebration. It's been said numerous times before, this is a historic occasion. It's the first of its kind uh, in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, and I'm very blessed to be a part of it. And I look forward to see uh, how... Dame Marcella will be playing an instrumental role in the development of the Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis. And I'm glad we got a chance to share this moment with persons at home who couldn't make it to the ceremony and those who are abroad but who want to be involved in the, the goings-on of St. Kitts and Nevis. And we want to thank all the listeners and the viewers to ZIZ Television, the listeners to ZIZ Radio all those who tuned in to the various platforms here at ZIZ. And as you said before, it's always a pleasure to bring ceremonies like these to your home, wherever you are. And we did the best to make sure that you felt a part of what took place here at Government House. Indeed. So. From all of us here at ZIZ Broadcasting Corporation, we'd like to thank you, the listening and viewing public, for being a part of this very historic mom and momentous occasion, the installation ceremony of Her Excellency Dame Marcella Leibert, GCMG, JP, the newest Governor General of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. I'm Jason Davis. And I'm Via Galloway, wishing you all the best. Thank you and good night. <laughs>